Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update nationwide for April 10th, 2025. A lot to get through today, tropical moisture developing over in the north as a tropical low begins to spin itself up over the Northern Territory. Plenty of rainfall feeding into this system now via the Coral Sea into the Gulf of Carpentaria, which is leaving soggy far north Queensland with even more rainfall in the gauges. Let's talk about what's happening up there right now. You can see a few more showers and storms streaming in from the Coral Sea out of the uh, east and then making their way over the northern parts of Queensland into extreme north Queensland up around Lockhart River which have had some good showers and a very good deluge or two overnight. The rainfall then crossing over the Cape York Peninsula across to Weeper and Orican and then making its way out into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Heavy falls have been reported around there as I have mentioned. Rainfall ongoing as well across far north Queensland. We have had a good couple of showers here and there into the Daintree Rainforest overnight but nothing too crazy and a few good showers as well up around the Hope Vale and the Cooktown area with rainfall expected to continue throughout the remainder of today as well. Uh, the cloud is intensifying up there as well so I imagine rainfall coming out of the southeast is going to pick up as well for uh, far north Queensland and especially the Daintree rain for us through tonight and into tomorrow. You can also see a few showers making their way through the Whit Sundays. Relatively unpleasant weather down there. Wind speeds as well now starting to pick up about 35 kilometres an hour out of the southeast and winds along the Cassidy coast as well. You can see out at Arlington Reef at 50 kilometres an hour out of the southeast gusting close to 70. So some rather unpleasant weather now really beginning to build up in far north Queensland and imagine people very much sick of this stuff but we still have another couple of days of it that's for sure. Let's talk about the rain accumulations right now and see what numbers we're expecting in the next couple of days. Like I said, showers still ongoing up in far north Queensland, north of Cooktown, but those showers will be moving into the Cassidy Coast and the Daintree Rainforest by this evening and into early tomorrow morning. Heavier falls expected into the Daintree Rainforest by early tomorrow morning as this low-pressure system really begins to mature uh, up in the Northern Territory, and I'll get to this in just a second. We're also going to see a secondary low-pressure centre begin to develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria as tipped by major forecast models sometime through Friday and into Saturday, and this is going to drive more rainfall ashore from the Coral Sea over far north Queensland. So again, those heavy showers continuing as this low pressure, I guess, ridge or rut in the monsoon trough continues to develop. Showers and storms widespread through Friday afternoon and heavy showers and storms expected to be th uh, extending themselves through the Daintree and then down into the Cassidy Coast by Friday evening. And those showers contracting up into the Daintree rainforest by Saturday morning. Showers and storms continuing through Saturday for the Daintree and the Cassidy Coast. And you can see those showers and storms widespread continuing through Sunday as well. They will then begin to ease off by the looks of things through Monday and Tuesday. This low pressure system is then going to form into a proper tropical low and move north of Kakadu and Arnhem Land into the Northern Territory over Cape Wessel and those sort of locations by early next week. Forecast model support for this system right now, and I'll get into the detail about this in just a second, is still looking pretty good, but in terms of rainfall, it looks like it is going to be far enough away from far north Queensland's Cassidy and Daintree coasts as to where it's not going to be too problematic. But you can see it bounces down into the Gulf of Carpentaria later on into the forecast period as a tropical low, even a tropical cyclone maybe. And if we do see this develop uh, or this uh, situation happen or unfold, we could be seeing plenty of rainfall funnel down from Papua New Guinea and into the uh, northern parts of the Coral Sea through far north Queensland. Once again, a bit of an express train of rainfall between the 18th and the 22nd of April. Forecast modelling is not so on board with that situation, but you can see showers and storms continuing right through the foreseeable future, right out towards the end of April by the looks of things. Uh, even the GFS forecast model is calling for some substantial rainfall up there uh, on the forecast modelling. So some interesting stuff, that's for sure. And certainly something worth keeping an eye on at this point in time. And I think the top story right now is, that, yes, we've got that rainfall coming through throughout Friday, Saturday, and Sunday up in far north Queensland, but with the development of a tropical low that's expected to form in the wake of the tropical low that's developing right now, I know it is a bit, a, confu a bit of a confusing mess of a story. We could be seeing even more rainfall later on into the forecast period after around Wednesday or Thursday next week. So again, it's certainly something to be keeping a close eye on at this point in time. And yeah, good rainfall is just expected all around. In terms of a tropical cyclone impact up in far north Queensland looking exceedingly unlikely right now unless it is on the Carpentaria coastline but I reckon for locations between Nullarby all along the uh, Carpentaria coastline into the Gulf Country even down towards Burkton and Corumba and then right up towards Thursday Island on the uh, eastern side of the Gulf of Carpentaria I reckon it is now time to begin preparations for a weak tropical cyclone, uh, cyclone slash rainfall event so making sure that you've got some sandbags on standby and getting your cyclone emergency kits ready because it is going to take that extra bit of time for this system considering the remote location of these places. I feel like now, considering all the major forecast models are very much set in stone with this system developing, and we can even see some of the precursor convection beginning to develop in this general location here. Once this gets over this weekend into uh, the Null and Wine Cape Wessel sort of area, this is going to begin developing into a full-blown tropical low, much like how this tropical low is now beginning to develop north of Warawai on the Northern Territory side of things. So I reckon that it is now time to begin tropical cyclone preparations, even though we're looking at a potential impact about 10 days out into the future 
I don't really see a future where this busts out. Again, if you want to stay conservative and uh, check back in a couple of days, of course, that is completely fine. But we will keep a close eye on things. But I do reckon that this tropical cyclone is now set in stone to develop. Let's take a look at the forecast rainfall accumulation. Some new colors today, uh, by the way. So let me know what you think of them. The color scheme is in the bottom right hand side of your screen, but I'll go through with them in greater detail. So those uh, blues is between zero up to 25 millimeters. The greens is between 25 out to 80 millimeters. Oranges between 80 to 120 millimeters. Uh, those uh, pink colors is up around that 250 millimeter mark. And the moments we're talking about these purples, we're talking in excess of 300 millimeters up to about five or 600 millimeters before it turns white again, where we're going to be talking about numbers up to a thousand millimeters. Let me know what you think about them. I can always change in the back if you're not a fan of this, but I just thought it'd freshen it up. But enough about the colors. Let's talk about the rainfall situation up in far north Queensland. You can see some pretty significant rainfall accumulations into the Carpentaria coastline. Slow moving tropical low will always dump a thousand millimeters over there. No two ways about it. So some big time accumulations can be expected along the Carpentaria coastline. Some big falls also expected into the Gulf Country region as well, between 25 to 150 millimeters. Over this weekend, we've got that significant rainfall coming through, especially for the Daintree rainforest. They're expected to be the wettest of locations with a potential 500 millimeters coming through. And like I said, those heaviest falls coming through beginning Friday night, continuing through Saturday before lighter showers kick up Sunday and into Monday and moderate rainfall continuing throughout the remainder of the week. So 300 millimeters this weekend with a further 200 millimeters on top of that over the 10 days after this coming weekend. Some big rainfall accumulations possible in the Daintree rainforest. Again, nothing unusual for this time of the year, but certainly something worth keeping close tabs on at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations along the Castro Coast, anywhere between 80 to about 250 or 300 millimeters there. The highest of accumulations could pick up slightly more than that over the next two weeks. We could be talking about accumulations there up around that 500 millimeter mark. But again, rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be as extreme along the Casper Coast as they will be up in the Daintree rainforest. Accumulations between 25 and 100 millimeters expected around the Cardwell Gap and the Hinchbrook Island area. And then lighter accumulations expected further down the North Queensland coastline down through Townsville Air and accumulations up to about 80 millimeters expected around Proserpine, Mackay and whatnot. Those locations there with a few residual showers coming through in the next 14 days. Certainly some interesting stuff, that's for sure. Far North Queensland putting it on, putting on a show for later on in the forecast season, that's for sure. Later on to the wet season, rather. So it's interesting stuff that we've got this on the forecast modelling and quite exciting times as a tracker. I've certainly got my hands full, that's for sure. Let's shift focus now and talk about something that is now really developing this tropical low north of Melville Island and Bathurst Island in the Northern Territory. This system really expected to get its act together over the next couple of hours and into the next couple of days. And we are expecting uh, a good chance of a tropical cyclone to be uh, off shore from Western Australia and potentially a long range impact threat as well for the West Australian coastline. The forecast modelling is now becoming quite congruent for that situation. Let's talk about this system now. You can see as we take a look at wind speeds with those yellows indicating strong winds and then those reds which you can see beginning to develop as we get out towards Saturday and Sunday indicating gale force winds which indicates that this system is likely to become a tropical cyclone by around Saturday afternoon as it moves north of the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf through the Timor Sea and just the north of northwestern Kimberley region of Western Australia. That's a lot of Western in one sentence, that's for sure. Moving down through this weekend, down the Kimberley coastline, then into the Pilbara waters by around Tuesday or th uh, Wednesday, moving north of Rowley Shoals as a significant tropical cyclone by the looks of things, up around that Category 2, potentially even Category 3 or 4 status. Uh, conditions looking very healthy for this system here, so there's not going to be much uh, in the way of this system. And we have been talking about, if you've paid really close attention in the last couple of videos, cold fronts coming through mid next week, later next week even, for the southwest corner of Western Australia, and this system is going to get tied up in one by around around Thursday and it looks like it's going to make a sharp U-turn, a hairpin turn for the WA coastline and you can see this on the East Melbourne forecast model. Now the good thing with cold front interactions is they generally rip tropical cyclones apart. So this system here will likely get completely shredded by this low pressure system interaction and as such as it moves into the West Australian coastline it will likely be a much weaker system and there's a lot of places for this to hit uh, as well. The forecast modelling has no clue right now where exactly this system is going to hit but you can see between major forecast modelling at this point in time, we are expecting that sharp U-turn down to the West Australian coastline. The GFS calling for it to happen a little bit further out to sea, and then impacts around the Barrow Island and Karratha Onslow sort of area by around the 20th or the 21st of April, which is in contrast the East Midwest impacts around the, uh, I guess, 80 mile beach port headland sort of area around Friday or Saturday, the 18th or 19th of April. It's a much weaker system. It'll be interesting to see what happens here, but I reckon that we are going to see that strong track tropical cyclone offshore north of the Rowley Shoals before that hairpin turn down to the southwest. Uh, uh, and it looks like we'll be seeing some significant weakening as this tropical cyclone approaches the WA coastline and the chance of a landfill is certainly now beginning to build. For those between Carnarvon
oven across to broom, there is a good chance of a tropical cyclone landfall sometime in the next two weeks to happen somewhere along those uh, that uh, those locations. But the chances of an individual town or city getting a tropical cyclone landfall at this point are so remote. It's just far too early to be commenting on such a thing. So there's no need to be making preparations for this system right now. We're going to have to wait until we see a bit of con uh, congruency between the forecast modeling as to where this U-turn is going to happen, or even when this system is about to make its U-turn, then we'll get a bit of an idea of where this system is going to make that landfall in the end. I do imagine we'll get some answers by later on this weekend and into early next week when this system does properly form into a tropical cyclone. It's just too early to tell at this point in time. So no need to be making preparations, no need to be making expectations of this system at this point in time. And either way, if it does come ashore, we're going to have plenty of notice. And it's also very likely to be a weaker system as well. So there's some peace of mind for everybody uh, looking at this tropical cyclone forecast and thinking oh, it was a bit late in the season to be getting something like that. Over in Western Australia, this is typical stuff for this time of the year. Anyways, enough tropical cyclone talk. Just a few showers and storms to be talking about for New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. They're beginning to pipe up from today as that high pressure ridge really begins to build over in New Zealand. And you can see those showers now beginning to uh, develop uh, well offshore from New South Wales and into southeast Queensland. Showers and storms not extending over the coastline right now, but a few bands are now beginning to line themselves up along the coastline. So the gloomy weather is not too far around the corner. You can see those showers beginning to pick up from later on tonight and into early tomorrow morning, especially through tomorrow afternoon. Actually, those showers and storms have become white, quite widespread through the northeast of New South Wales, north of Tyree, but especially through Coffs Harbour and Lismore. And then the southeasterly winds will drive up a few showers into southeast Queensland through early parts of this weekend. And you can see widespread showers through Saturday and into Sunday as well before the rainfall does begin to ease off as the high pressure ridge begins to weaken off through Monday and into Tuesday. But some healthy rainfall accumulations can be expected. You can see over a four day period between Friday and out towards Monday, we are expecting some relatively significant rainfall accumulations, nothing crazy but you can see offshore accumulations could be up around that triple figure uh, mark and I wouldn't be writing off accumulations between 75 to 125 millimetres in the extreme northeastern corner of New South Wales especially into the mountainous areas adjacent to the coastline such as around Cape Byron or uh, up around the Tweed Heads type area between 25 and 75 millimetres expected for the Gold Coast about 20 millimetres can be expected in the Brisbane metro area and between 20 and 40 millimetres up on the Sunshine Coast as well especially through Saturday and Sunday heavier falls like I said will be concentrated into the northeast of New South Wales, with some relatively significant falls as far south as Coffs Harbour. Again, this rainfall is nothing crazy, and it's not going to be causing any flooding, uh, that's for sure, but it certainly is some stuff that uh, that's worth keeping an eye on, and it's going to feel a little bit more like some wintry weather for them. It's going to be rather unpleasant and quite cold as well, with some cold winds whipping out of the southeast for this part of New South Wales and Queensland. Unpleasant stuff pretty much all around in the forecast modelling. Much later on in the forecast modelling as well, it looks like we might have an east coast low begin to develop sometime around the 20th out to about the 22nd. Uh, certainly something worth keeping an eye on, but it does look like between major forecast modelling, there is going to be a little bit of turbulence in the southern parts of the Coral Sea and maybe even into the Tasman Sea as well. So we might see some stronger low pressure systems begin developing around that time uh, on the forecast, but it is still a little bit too early to tell at this point in time. It seems to be the motto of some of these forecast updates. Hey, right now we're definitely in a bit of a too early to tell type forecast situation, but we will keep a very close eye on things and I'll keep you posted at the second that I know stuff as well. Into the southwest of Western Australia, Australia, rather unpleasant weather has been occurring over the last couple of days, but it is going to fine up a little bit through Thursday and Friday. So today and tomorrow, it's been a cold night again, down into single digits across much of the wheat belt. And then we're expecting a warm day tomorrow with tops up into the mid thirties across the Southwest of WA and some warm temperatures as well expected around the Perth metro area up around that 33 to 35 degree mark. And it could get even warmer up into the high thirties for the Northern parts of the wheat belt. And even tickling 40 degrees as you get out into the Murchison and up towards Gascoigne Junction, it's gonna get quite warm indeed, even for this time of the year that is starting to tickle some higher temperatures or what I'd consider as some higher temperatures. Rainfall won't be far behind the system uh, though and you can see showers and storms wide uh, widespread as a low pressure system develops offshore through Saturday night and into Sunday and then showers and storms expected through the southwest and into the wheat belt through Sunday. Showers and storms probably won't make it up into the Perth metro area but a couple of lighter showers can be expected through Sunday and into, uh, early Monday morning with the odd storm here and there but again I wouldn't be getting your hopes up for significant rainfall accumulations. Showers and storms will die down through Monday and Tuesday before another cold front by the looks of things begins developing sometime through Wednesday and Thursday and it kind of looks like we're expecting a good period of some really healthy moisture through the gold fields into the southern parts of the gas coin uh, through or between the 15th out to about the 20th of April by the looks of things with a couple of good drops of rainfall uh, possible out there. I don't really know what that's associated with right now. I haven't properly looked at it but it looks like some low pressure systems might bring some much needed rainfall out there and we could be seeing some healthy rainfall
rainfall accumulations, especially through next Wednesday and Thursday. Cold fronts impacting the southwest corner of Western Australia aren't going to be too strong, and a couple of showers can be expected here and there, but I wouldn't get your hopes up for anything really significant in the way of rainfall, but you can see, as indicated by those yellow and orange colours, between 25 out to about 80 millimetres can be expected through areas such as Kalgoorlie, right out towards Kuklubiti Roadhouse and out towards Rowena. It's about this time last year, actually, that they had some pretty extreme rainfall out here, about 500 millimetres of the stuff, in fact, near record-breaking rainfall. Uh, and whilst that rainfall is not expected to develop once again uh, on this forecast modelling, it is certainly some uh, interesting food for thought. Between late April and early May is when we do start to see some pretty extreme rainfall accumulations on the forecast modelling, uh, comparatively speaking, for the goldfields and into the Gascoigne region as well, and the Murchison, especially of Western Australia. So these are going to be locations to watch, especially with higher than average rainfall accumulations expected over the next couple of months. So get excited if you do live in the gas corner into the Murchison because some good rainfall could be coming your way over the next uh, couple of months, that's for sure, especially with how the forecast models are tipping it right now. Pushing this forecast out long range and taking a look at 14 day rainfall accumulations, some interesting stuff now beginning to develop, some good rainfall down into the southwest wilderness of Tasmania, and some showers and storms now widespread across Victoria, but between major forecast models, it is a relatively incongruent picture at this point in time. It's still a bit too early to tell and say for sure when the drought is going to break across South Australia and Victoria, but one thing's for sure is that they need a lot more rainfall than what the latest forecast models have been suggesting. So unfortunately, looking quite uh, pitiful down there, we do desperately need some more rainfall for South Australia and into Victoria, but it's not going to be coming anytime soon on this forecast modelling or this forecast solution. You can see between major forecast models, there are still some major discrepancies, but yeah, no real rainfall on the forecast and the drought is expected to continue for South Australia and Victoria. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. If you have enjoyed this forecast up there, then please do let me know in the comment section down below and leave a like on the video while you're at it. Subscribe if you haven't already as well. Let's see if we can hit 40,000 subscribers somewhat soon. So again, thank you so much to all of the recent support. And let me know what you feel of the colors as well. I can change them back if you're not a fan of them. Uh, so let me know. I just thought it'd be a nice change. I was a little bit bored for about an hour yesterday. So I went and refurbished some of the YouTube stuff as well. So expect some very minor aesthetic details and some aesthetic changes throughout the next couple of days to be implemented. But that is all for me today. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.